Hello and welcome to another episode of the iPhotography podcast. This is Stephen here from iPhotography and today we've got a special guest in iPhotography member Christina Cox. Christina is a fantastic landscape photographer amongst other genres but I think she would probably say herself landscape photography is probably one of her strongest areas. So we wanted to have a little sit down with Christina as she won iPhotography's 2020 Landscape Photographer of the Year award. Um, so we wanted to say just find out a little bit kind of about her background to photography, what she's actually doing with it now and what she's looking forward to in the future. So we're going to jump straight into the interview now. I hope you enjoy it. So if you want to check out a few more of our offers and some of our products, you can find all the links in the description for that, as well as all the links in the description for any of Christina's websites that she'll mention throughout the podcast. But I hope you enjoy it. So here we go. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad in yourself. Oh, good. We started to get a little bit of the weather, I think, that was coming up from uh, your end and has, has kind of made its way down south. But it, I woke up this morning and it was all like frosty and icy across oh, the ground. Okay. Well, it's just started snowing again. It's like, it's crazy. It's like April yeah. and it's still snowing. <laughs> That's what I was saying the other day, um, that literally over the weekend, it's been beautiful down here. It's been, you know, closer to about 20 degrees. And I've certainly yeah. been outside doing a bit of gardening and how it's it's changed literally within 24 hours. It's been absolutely yeah. crazy. I mean, have you had any warm weather at all over Easter? Funnily, you should say that on Sunday, it was really, really warm um, and sunny. Um, and we had that for a couple of days. But then yesterday we woke up and there was snow on the ground. It was just mad. <laughs> Okay, no. so just starting off with a bit of backstory then, Christina, you know, how did you kind of get to where you are now in terms of being a photographer? What's your photo journey been like? Well, I, I, I've always been really artistic and I always knew that I wanted to go to art college. Um, and I kind of knew that from about the age of 10. Um, and funnily enough, that was about the age that I got my first camera. I was given this little Kodak camera from a cousin um, and I used to take it everywhere with me for years and years and years. Um, and it just kind of it developed from there. That camera got stolen. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the, the circumstances or anything like that. But yeah, I do remember it got stolen because I got... Um, for evidence, we got the photographs back out of the camera from the police with like evidence things marked on it. So I always remember that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so my interest in kind of arty things has always been there. Um, and when, when I was at secondary school in the final year, my friend and I wanted to do the photography course that was offered. But the school had all of this uh, darkroom equipment, but they had no darkroom. Oh, wow. So they said to uh, myself and my friend, well, if you build a dark room, you can do the course. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> they, they gave us this um, cupboard in between two classrooms. And basically we spent like a week just doing it up, like blacking out all the windows and setting mm -hmm. up all the enlargers and all the, the chemical processing, because it was back in the day, obviously. Yeah. Um, and... After we'd set it up, um, we kind of just went out and about taking photographs using the school cameras and things like that. And one of the things was a, a photography competition for um, a, like a, a place in Rathall, which is near Edinburgh. Yeah, It's on the canal and there was like a, a sort of bar and they did this competition and we participated in it. And there were two categories. There was an adult category and a children's category for under 14. So we were 17. And um, basically they liked my photo so much that they introduced another category and I won the 17 and over category. Oh, wow. um, so I won a party on the barge with my <laughs> photograph. <laughs> and it was one of the first proper photos that I'd ever taken. I, you know, I developed it myself and everyone so. Oh, I wow. think that's where it started. That's the main thing. Yeah. Um, do you, do you and find... it's just kind of developed from there. Um, as I mentioned, I went to art college. And one of the, 
it's slightly different in England than it is up here. We do like a first year general and then you tend to stay in the same college for the next three years. Yeah. Um, but the first year you do like loads of different subjects and then for the final term you choose two subjects. And I ended up choosing drawing and painting and sculpture, but the photography teacher really wanted me to, to do photography, but I, <laughs> for some reason I decided against it. Um, but anyway, I ended up using a lot of photography in my artwork, um, especially when I went on to do my master's. I did my master's through Winchester. And um, the work that I made was like, I used to photograph um, things that I had made and put into spaces and I used to light them and then I would photograph them using slides mm -hmm. and then I would project those slides back into the same space and people would like walk around and things like that. So that mm -hmm. was kind of my master's work. So I have used photographer for a long time. Indeed. Um, but I think things kind of progressed a bit more. And then I think it was 2018 that I joined the course and I just did that. Um, my boss was ill and I decided that I just, to fill the time I was going to do a little bit of CPD and mm. it's just kind of mm. exploded since then. It, so as I say, I've always done photography, but yeah. the course has been something that's made it the main focus really, I yeah. think. Yeah, that it's 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 amazing that you've had you've had such a great relationship with it, and but in different ways, as you say, Absolutely. you know, you <laughs> photograph things and you've you've experimented with dark rooms, and it's not something that a lot of people would kind of uh, you know encounter these days. There is a a bit of a, a revival for film photography I've seen amongst some people, but it's it feels more like a subculture now as opposed to it being you know the the mainstream. Obviously, mm -hmm. digital I think well you know is is something that'll be here for a long time, but it's it's nice that you know the roots of it I think because I think it makes you appreciate how hard it is to to kind of yeah. make an image sometimes and and where it may seem so easy today by just you know pointing and clicking there's a heck of a lot that goes into the to the actual creation and as you say when you've you won that competition you'd feel so proud of yourself because you literally have created it from a to z and Absolutely. that, that yeah. feeling that motivation is is incredible but kind of going going from your film days to now digital as much as we say you know cameras don't make the photographer you know vice versa it's always about the photographer themselves um what kind of kit are you using though these days what what do you shoot with um i shoot with a canon 70d um and i love it it's great um, it's quite versatile and, and compact, well, compact-ish, I suppose. Um, but that, that's the main one that I use. Um, and I have several lenses. <laughs> In fact, I have quite a lot. I was listing them um, this morning when I was kind of thinking about what I use, and I was like, oh, that's actually quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your kind of go-to lens? What Do you have, like, a, a favourite um, one? I, I quite I, quite often I use the 18 to 200 mil just because it's so generic, but yeah. I do have a few others. I have a wide angle, which is um, 10 to 18. And I use that a lot for landscape work. Yeah. Um, and I also have the 50 mil prime, which I love. It's, it's so great for yeah. many things. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have a macro, I have a lens baby, I have... Um, a zoom which is 70 to 300 I'm just reading my list by the way <laughs> that's fine it sounds like you need a list to remember all that, that you've got. <laughs> the thing is a lot some of the lenses are for me and um, you know I chose them but other ones are specifically for like my work and things like that like the zoom is very handy because I you know I do a lot of work um, in the theatre and things like that so I need it for that Indeed. Well, it, it nicely rolls on to my next question, because I was going to say, I, from what I understand, you work in, in theatre industry, but it's it's interesting to know because it's not something people see straight away as saying, oh, you know, I'd be a photographer and I can work in, in theatre. You know, there's loads of different avenues you can go down with photography. But how how does yourself as a photographer and working in the theatre industry combine? What kind of opportunities do you get? What kind of jobs do you have to do? Lots. Um... <laughs> 
I mean, I, I work for a touring theatre company, one of the biggest ones in Scotland, um, and it's it's a great opportunity because um, I do all of the rehearsal photography stuff. So, you know, when, when they're starting a new play, there's the read through. So I go and photograph all the actors and things doing the read through. And then they usually get me to come back in and do sort of more sort of action shots and things when they're in rehearsal. Um, so that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of why I need the Zoom because you kind of you can't really get in amongst them when they're obviously when they're rehearsing, but you yeah. need to get the expressions and things like that. So that comes in very handy. Um, but I also, I mean, my, the main part of my job is that I do all the graphic design work. Um, so I photograph a lot of stuff and then that is then converted into posters and programs and social media posts and things like that. So it's quite versatile, yeah. you know, and, I, and a lot of even my photography work is then made into illustrations. So it's not just like a photograph on a poster, it can be, you know, turned into some sort of drawing or manipulation or, you know, different kind of exposures. Indeed. So it's it's quite interesting. Indeed. Um, I also work for a local authority where I project manage a thing called the Creative Residency. And that's where we, we take 16 year olds, 15, 16 year olds, we take them up to Oban because um, the place has, a, its normal use is, a, a, what, what is it that they do? Um, like an outdoor center, yeah. Mm. And we take it over for a week in June and the kids go up and they study seven different subjects um, one of which is photography, funnily enough. I don't teach it I because I manage the project. <laughs> but while I'm up there, I do take photographs of them working and things like that. And then when they come back and all the work's collated, I then photograph all the work for their catalogue because they do an exhibition at the end of the year, like yeah. a proper major exhibition. Wow. Um, so that's that's interesting as well. You know, it's it's almost like product photography. Well, yeah, I can say there's a lot of project <laughs> management that goes on, but I can see there's there's massive aspects of um, of like marketing to your job as well, which yeah. I, I suppose for any kind of pro photographer, um, as much as you know, picking up the camera and taking the photographs is is the thing that everybody loves to do the most you're so true that even if you're doing it obviously for the theater there's the aspects of marketing you know social media and you know your engagements etc you've got oh, to do it yeah, it's, it's huge a, it's yeah you're spinning so many plates at the same time which and it's and it's lovely to see that even though you've got such a busy job you also then do more as well with the with the young kids so it's it's a nice way to kind of give yeah. back I mean do you do they get to do any photography themselves Yes, um, there's seven, as I say, there's seven different subjects and they have to make an application to be able to go to this in the first place. Um, and we take, we take usually around 60 of them up there. And there's usually maybe about between six and 10 do photography. Right. Um, and it's always useful. I, it's quite good that, you know, getting the info from the photography tutors and things <laughs> like that. And it's nice because it's so beautiful up there that the locations yeah. and that that they get to go to. And it's just amazing. The whole oh, experience yeah. is fantastic for for all of them. It's it's amazing. As long they, as they've they got... They change so much over the week. We only go for yeah. five days, really. Um, and they, they all come and they're all, like, nervous and... Oh, I don't know anybody and and by the end of the week they're all like best friends forever oh, that's <laughs> so it's brilliant. fantastic it's amazing what art does for people it's incredible it, it's so you're so right and um, we see that a lot in the gallery as well with eye photography that people who come along they upload a couple of pictures and they, they start to get a little bit more ingrained with the gallery and the community and yeah you start to find kind of you know online uh, a bit of an online network with other photographers that you, you wouldn't have ever met you know be it if they're across the other side of the world but I mean, speaking of the gallery, you know, looking at your images now as I've got them on my screen here, mm -hmm. you know, I've always understood you as a photographer who who knows their style, which is something that a lot of people strive for and look for. It's kind of like looking for a niche and they never really get there. But you seem to be kind of quite confident upon 
what you want your image to look like you know your kind of a, a clearly defined style sometimes it's a little bit dark and broody sometimes it's a little bit brighter but it's it's always very clear and defined but mm. did you kind of consciously go down that route and kind of create that niche or is it just something you've kind of fallen into and just found something you enjoy I suppose it's kind of a bit of both um I mean I really I found the style really through because I, I love editing. Um, it's one aspect of photography I know that some of the others kind of stand yeah. back a bit from, but I absolutely love it. Um, and I developed that style, I guess, just through practicing and just playing around. And it's something that I've always been drawn to, that kind of moody look, which is slightly ironic because um, the the work I did at art college, everything was white. <laughs> <laughs> and I went a complete 180 degrees and now everything's like dark and moody. And, <laughs> and I, yeah, I, I think I, I'm just kind of drawn to it. And, and when I'm editing the work, I try different things because I can spend like hours and hours like just sitting there playing around with things and, yeah. and whatnot. I don't know if that's because it's part of my job or not. I'm not sure, yeah. but... Um, but I, yeah, I find that I constantly go back to the the slightly darker kind of moody atmospheric yeah. type I, shot. I, I think it works so well, and it you've managed to work it so nicely into so many different genres. Whereas you kind of could initially think, well, it works well in landscapes, you know, and and you know, mm. so try that there. But you know, as I'm looking at your images now, you've uploaded some beautiful images um, for some of like our weekend challenge with instruments, and then some uh, kind of leaves and some florals, then also some portraits. And again, it works really, really well. So, yeah. but also then you've there is images where you've done something totally different and kind of quite bright and kind of quite airy. So it's also nice that you're aware that maybe sometimes that style doesn't work for every type of photograph. Yeah. And, and as you say, you know, you've, you, you may be kind of having this rebellion stage from, from where everything was very white and pale and minimalist in your yeah. teen years and you're, you're having this rebellion again. Yeah, completely. <laughs> but that, but that I think blossoms with personality and with, with experience you know the you know how life changes you and it will then inform your art and, and change things a little bit that way so don't be surprised if it, if it kind of changes again really but I mean again on that line obviously given the past 12 months that everyone's experienced in and yeah. outside of photography it's been extremely hard but looking at the, the positives kind of as, as to what's to come you know do you have like any goals or any kind of achievements or targets that you're kind of looking to set yourself over the next 12 months or just things that you really want to do? Yeah, um, I think probably just getting back out there and being able to travel again. Um, I love traveling. I love being outside in the landscape. I mean, I don't restrict myself to solely landscape photography, but that's probably if you push me, that would probably be the one that I said that I love the most. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there are there are places that I've been to in the past where I didn't have a decent camera. Um, you know, it was a kind of point and shoot type number. And um, places like the Grand Canyon and the Petrified Forest and wow. um, like a lot. I did the interrail thing when I was at college as well. So did went around Europe a lot of places. And I have photographs, which is great. But I would love to go back to all of these places and really explore it. Yeah. properly with a good camera and get some amazing photos and other locations that I haven't been to like I mean I'd love to go to the Antelope Canyon in Utah I just yeah. think that would be amazing and um, so yeah those kind of weird and wonderful desert landscapes really intrigue me yeah I, I kind of love the desert my skin doesn't <laughs> <laughs> but I love it um, and like I don't I don't know um, my husband's American so and he's from California and one of the places I've always wanted to go to is Death Valley and yeah. my mother-in-law every time I say that she'll go <laughs> and she's like you need a hat that's big <laughs> <laughs> factor 200 sun cream and all that and laughing Absolutely. at arm but you're right I mean I've never been that far across uh, in America of any 
been New York uh, really once. But yeah, as you say, the the landscape is so unique to to anywhere else in the world as well. But obviously, yeah, it kind of comes with its its perils because I've I've even read stories where photographers have actually suffered camera failure because it's gotten so warm. So yeah, so it does have like the parameters as to what kind of conditions they can work in. Um, but yeah, there's one thing to kind of keep an eye on because yeah, you may find you get there and, and nothing <laughs> works as well. But is that something that you're hoping to try and do kind of in the next next year or so? Do it, you know, yeah, more traveling with to. it? Um, I mean, we, we had planned to go back to Barcelona because um, actually next week is our 20th wedding anniversary and we met in Barcelona. Oh, lovely. So we had planned to go back there, but obviously with travel restrictions, it's just not possible. It's so um, And, you know, we do go back and visit my, my husband's um, family and things. So we were quite lucky because we his dad lives in Florida and his mom lives in California. So we yeah. have, you know, opportunity to go to both sides of the, the country. Yeah, um, definitely. So, yeah, we, would, we probably would try to get there as, as soon as we can again. Um, oh, that's brilliant. And, you know, go off and do some shooting and things like that rather well, that's than it. visiting. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You, I should say, you know, as your experience grows and your camera knowledge grows, that you can go back to the places that, as you say before, you've visited and now maybe go back with it with a more keen eye and a more kind of um, understanding eye that you're not just taking pictures for the sake of taking pictures, but you're doing it to really preserve memories yeah. and make the most of the situation. I mean, when, when I went originally, you know, I had a basic knowledge of technique and things like that, but actually the course has given me, you know, I, th I thought I had a reasonable knowledge of photography before, but not until I started the course, I, I really have seen like progression big time, you know, and that's just understanding what you're, what you're doing technical wise, as well as being creative and, you know, looking at composition and, and shape and form and things like that um but yeah just having where the I had as I said I had the technical knowledge before but I don't think it really stuck in and that's what the course has given me it's given me that I now know what I'm actually doing does that make sense <laughs> I totally understand because I, I think we were we were speaking uh, a while ago I was speaking with other students that they they read a lot and they they watch a lot but sometimes it just doesn't seem to stick in their head yeah. or once they go outside everything's just forgotten and there's that kind of panic mode that everybody goes into of thinking right i need to get the shot just just need to kind of get it before it goes and and sometimes it's fine to grab the moment but it's maybe not best preserved if you're not really thinking about all your settings and it 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 it's just comes down to practice and and kind of you know rereading relearning rewatching however you're doing it um, because that's the only way it's going to stick in your head and and again it comes with time it's not going to happen overnight so it's yeah. it's nice that you have taken time and you've not pressured yourself to to kind of learn everything within the first couple of weeks as well because yeah i mean even me now i'm what maybe 15 years down the line as to when I kind of started professionally and there's still things I learn and I learn from from other members of the iPhotography community I learn other things online because photography to a large degree is is changing a little bit with mm -hmm. you know the technology but there's always different ways that you can tell stories and different locations you can go to totally. that you've not done before so it's just a personal pursuit but the fact that there is no kind of mountain top to reach it's it's lovely that it kind of keeps you going in that sense but mm -hmm. um what one of my kind of favorite questions to ask when we do interviews we call it the time travel question um so how it goes is that we say like if you could go back in time to literally when you first started out with your camera so going back to when you were in college and if not before if you could kind of give your younger self one golden nugget of information, something that you think would help yourself on your photography journey kind of in the years ahead, what, what do you think you could say to yourself to make it a little bit easier or a little bit more, you could be a bit more wiser in a, in a way? <laughs> well, I guess I kind of answered that. <laughs> but it's, really, it's, it's, it's absorbing that technical side of things yeah. because um, for me, I as I say, I really didn't understand just how important that was. You know, I, you know, I, I tried different settings and things before, but when you don't have that understanding of it, um, it can be a bit of a hit or a miss. In fact, I, I found a quote um, 
earlier is Helen Miller did this quote and it's the point of technique is to learn the difference between a good accident and a bad accident <laughs> and I think that applies brilliantly to my photography <laughs> <laughs> I think I can relate to that as well because definitely. <laughs> you know you've got happy accidents before but when you have that grounding and that knowledge behind you the skills then develop naturally on their own and you get more good accidents than you do. You do. <laughs> I, I would say in photography has a, a large amount of look to it, but yeah. you kind of create your own look in a way that if you are technically sound, if you understand the camera that you're taking with you and you don't need to overthink what settings you need, and if you're out looking for opportunities, they will appear to you. So yeah, I think you if you put yourself out there and you're more confident, then yeah, you're so right. You know, you can you can get happy accidents and things you didn't expect, but you know, they 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 start to stop being accidents and they start to be, you know, products because of your look and your, your skill. So yeah. I, that's a, yeah. that's a lovely quote to almost end with, but for, for the fact that this is obviously a podcast and a lot of the times, obviously we're talking about photographs and if people are watching the YouTube version of this, we'll throw up some images of your photographs, Christina, during the, uh, the talk, but for others, um, do you have a, a website or any kind of social media handles you yes. can drop us? Um, my website is infinite blue. Um, designs.co.uk um, and I'm on Facebook as Infinite Blue Designs as well and Instagram those are the kind of main ones I use I use 500 pics as well but I don't know that, is that social would you call that social media I'm not it's, sure I suppose it is it's, it's like, like a, a sharing platform isn't yeah it? like a photo gallery but yeah if you you I'll, I'll get all the links off you afterwards and I'll make sure we put them in the descriptions no to problem. wherever the podcast and the, the video is presented so people can have a look in there but but yeah I just want to say thank you so much for your your time then this morning You're it's welcome. been brilliant to learn about the the kind of <laughs> that how photography has evolved for you and, and how it kind of works within the theatre industry, because it's just not something you see a lot of. I mean, is there many people that are in your position across theatres, you know, across the country? Um, well, I mean, I would say that most theatre companies probably use um, freelance photographers. Yeah. Um, and technically I'm freelance as well. I'm not freelance photographer, but um, <laughs> freelance project management I guess is what it is um, and I you know the company that I work for just kind of use my skills to their advantage shall we say and <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's afforded me to you know to progress and yeah. and one of the fun things is getting to photograph and some famous people as well <laughs> oh, come on. You've got to I, I don't know names. how famous <laughs> but you know there's some well-known names here and there <laughs> which are, is are a you, lot of fun <laughs> are you allowed to drop some names for us they're not, they're not oh <laughs> um well uh recently i photographed um john mccardle who was Billy Corkle in Brookside, and he was also um, in Emmerdale. Yeah. Um, John Stahl, who was in Game of Thrones. I've heard of the name, yes. I've not, um, not really watched it, but yeah. Judy, oh, I forgot Judy's surname now. She was in the bill. She played, uh, she was in the bill for a long time, but I, 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 her surnames went out of my head. What character did she play? I don't know, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't. I haven't really watched any of these things. <laughs> I'm sure they won't be listening in a nice way. No, probably not. Probably not. Um, and Sarah Stewart, who was in, she was in some of the Batman movies. Oh. Uh, she played Batman's mother. <laughs> Oh wow! So they and so they they've come across onto onto stage, and that's how yeah, you the, a them. lot of them are theatre actors as well as TV and film. Um, oh. so yeah, it's. You know, and oh, and I also photographed Colin McCready, who was on Taggart. Yeah, that does ring a bell. That name, I can't. He was he was in it for but... a long time, kind of shorter guy. Um, yeah. Again, I don't know what his character was, but uh, he was in it for a long time. Oh, um, yeah. And there's a lot of other actors, but they tend to be in like River City, which is the Scottish soap opera, and yeah. Shetland, and um, oh, there's one woman. She was in. The thing with Robert Carlyle, the Scottish detective thing. What was it called? Um, oh uh, yeah, you. You know what I mean. Oh, that's going to be. <laughs> I'll tell you what we like. Forget names left, right, and center. 
<laughs> I think I think I know who you are. Um, Hamish Macbeth. Hamish, Hamish Macbeth. She played it. his girlfriend. She played Robert Carlyle's girlfriend. Oh ah, wow. So you, you have kind of you know brushed yeah. with quite quite <laughs> a few notable names. They're, in they're the not world. they're not A-list celebrities, but they're not uh... No, I know, I know, you know, a lot a, a lot of the, the, the characters though I do uh, re- recognize from what you were saying as well. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time anyway today, then Christina. It's been absolutely lovely speaking to you, and I'm sure we'll get to do this again. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed it. And yeah, uh, thank you oh, so much absolutely. for giving us fun. your backstory <laughs> in all of this. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right. It's lovely Take to talk to you. See you later. Thank you. Take care, Christina. Bye, Bye now. Bye.